Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this, the 60th Annual General Meeting of the Guild of Architectural Ironmongers. Looking back over the last year, we've been tested by one of the most challenging periods in a lifetime. The saying goes, tough times don't last, tough people do. The pandemic, plus the uncertainties of Brexit, have tested us all and given us new skills to cope with adversity. We are now entering our 60th year, known as the Diamond Anniversary. Diamonds are by nature tough and resilient, and we have had to be tough. We have had to be resilient, both as an industry and as an association. I'm very proud to look back on how the officers, committee members and Guild staff have rose to the challenges put before them. Whether suddenly having to work from home whilst continuing to support our members, starting to unpick the complicated knot of regulation around Brexit, or coping with the loss of the director. I want to note my fulsome thanks to them all for their support and to remind them of the amazing work that has been achieved. Last year saw us say goodbye to Angie Corkill and we recruited Chief Executive Simon Forrester to lead the team in our new strategic plan. More on that later. Our partnership with British Woodworking Federation on the Fire Door Inspection Scheme is well established and work is well on the way to UCAS accreditation. Other partnerships, such as the Joint Guide with FIS on managing social distancing in office environments, are also bearing fruit. We are making major progress in our goal to achieve recognition, both for the Guild and its membership. We now have direct influence on a range of committees, including Working Group 12 on competence for construction products. Our course programme continues to be the gold standard for architectural ironmongery education. All of this work is a result of the tireless work of the staff and volunteers. I will be handing over to Mario De Signore at the end of this meeting. Mario is inheriting a stronger, better guild as we enter a new chapter for the guild as a single, stronger body. Today, we cannot be together in person, but we can be together in spirit and in a shared purpose. Thank you for the trust you have placed in me to lead our guild. I appreciate your support immensely and regard it as an honour to have served. I would now like to hand over to our Chief Executive, Simon Forrester, to take us through the rest of the agenda. Thank you, Julian. Before we start the agenda proper, just to remind you that all Guild member companies in good standing are entitled to vote at this meeting. We sent you an email on Wednesday the 19th of May entitled GAI AGM Voting Notice which sets out how to access the voting system. You can access this now and have a play with the test vote, which you'll find on screen. While you're having that play, I'll deal with agenda item two. Those apologies I've received will be noted in the minutes. And I think, as you can see, the voting system is now working. Splendid. So people are clicking through with that, thank you. Okay, uh, and as we are quarit, we can continue on to item three. The minutes of the previous annual general meeting held on Tuesday, the 30th of June, 2020. I circulated those draft minutes as an attachment in the email of 19th of May. Uh, I asked for a proposal for these draft minutes as a true and accurate record of the meeting, and they were proposed by David Stacey of Dorma Carver and seconded by Juliet Lambert of County Agricultural Ironmongery. So can we please now vote on their acceptance? Someone's ahead of the game, thank you very much. Um, so I'm gonna wait a few seconds and let people vote. Do please vote. Five seconds. Thank you, that vote is carried. So, item four, I've not been made aware of any other items of business and all the matters arising are dealt with elsewhere in the agenda. So we now come to the Treasurer's Report, which will be given by Kaz Spivakovsky of Getsy UK. Good afternoon. I'd like to start by saying I hope that following this very difficult period, you and your families are well 
and by thanking the GAI staff team for their sterling efforts in this difficult period. They've maintained service levels and carefully managed resources, which I'm pleased to say has resulted in a surplus of £92,421 against a budget of £36,168. Much of the positive result is based on savings within the annual budget, primarily in the central department. Staff expenses were kept to a minimum with meetings held virtually and through staff working from home we saved on office expenses. The downturn has also meant that there was a number of underspent items against a number of lines in the budget. Planned professional fees, university research and promotion and education development as well as some other smaller lines. The bulk of the Guild's income has always been dependent on membership subscriptions and sales of the education programmes. It'll come as no surprise that the pandemic adversely affected the Guild's income. Membership was impacted by £17,000 and education sales by £52,000 in the year. With continued uncertainty at the start of the new financial year, we've continued to exercise tight cost control. However, I am pleased to say that we are experiencing a small upturn in education sales and membership recruitment as market confidence returns. Importantly, our debtors remain low and I'd like to acknowledge Davina King for her diligent work in keeping this to a minimum. Membership levels and budgeted income have dropped slightly this year, which given the challenges in the wider construction industry is to be expected. We lost 14 member companies who cited the economic impact of the pandemic and or lack of defined member benefits as the main reasons for not renewing their membership for the current year. And the Guild have made the decision to cancel the membership of 10 companies for non-payment of fees, equating to lost revenue totaling £27,810 for the year. However, I am pleased to report that this deficit has been offset by 10 new member companies joining the Guild. In respect of the Institute, numbers have reduced from 327 to 288 individual memberships. To address these adverse factors, we have introduced 60-day payment terms for subscriptions this year, begun increasing our membership benefits offer and have an engagement plan in place to address member retention for the coming year. I would like to specifically reference two further budget items for your attention. Last year, the job shop was heavily impacted by the downturn, which is no great surprise, but I'm pleased to say that we have turned a corner. As previously mentioned, the market is recovering and we are also pleased to announce that we have partnered with SFR Recruitment Solutions, which will help us deliver further growth in this important benefit. Secondly, AIJ Magazine. This is another area where we didn't achieve budgeted income. However, working with Atom Publishing, the Guild team have implemented additional marketing initiatives which should see improvement in the year. You can find out more about this at their session this afternoon or via the GAI website. Most importantly, we come to cash. Our cash reserves remain very healthy being further enhanced this year, which is a great result and puts us in a strong financial position. The reserves policy is being reviewed at the forthcoming meeting of the executive committee. Finally, I'd like to comment on one last area of finance and that of pricing. Part of the balance to be struck is to make every realistic effort to optimize value for money without expecting one constituency amongst our members to subsidise another. We are seeking to deliver a wide range of benefits and services to a disparate membership of individuals and companies of varying sizes. We've increased our subscriptions to deliver a range of new benefits and I support the new strategy to deliver more benefits and services across our membership. I'll hand back to Simon Forrester to manage the voting process for the accounts and the appointment of auditors. And lastly, thank you and enjoy the rest of the day and I look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully at some time 
soon. Thank you, Kaz. On to item five. The draft accounts previously circulated have not been changed by the auditors, so the figures that I circulated stand. Our Treasurer, Kaz, has proposed the accounts be accepted, and those have been seconded by Steve Buick of Dorma Cover. So the voting is open for you to vote on their acceptance. Give it five more seconds. Thank you. That's accepted. On to item six, which is the appointment auditors. On the appointment of auditors, uh, CAS proposes we remain with the same company, RPG Crouch Chapman, and this has been seconded by Paul Johnson of Asa Abloy. Can we please now vote on their acceptance as our auditors for the coming year? Thank you, that vote is carried. On to item seven, the appointment of our president, vice president and treasurer. The executive committee has submitted nominations in accordance with article 12 for the offices of president, Mario Del Signore of SES UK, vice president, Kaz Spivakovsky of Gatesy UK, and treasurer, Steve Buick of Dorma Cava. I've received proposal to appoint these individuals to the aforementioned posts from Andy Matthews of Hoppy, which has been seconded by Errol Jones of Asa Abloy. Can we please now vote on their acceptance? Thank you, that vote is carried. Congratulations, Mario, Kaz and Steve. On to item eight, the election of the executive committee. In accordance with the articles, the members who resigned by rotation and offered themselves for reappointment are David Stacey and Paul Johnson. Uh, Errol Jones from Asa Abloy was co-opted during the previous year and so was required to stand for appointment. In the previous year, Chris Stevens and Graham Sherville have stepped down from the committee which meant there were three nominations for three vacant seats. And so the following candidates joined the executive committee, David Stacey, Paul Johnson and Errol Jones. As before, the members were asked to ratify this set of names. Uh, Deborah Cannon has proposed the changes and they've been seconded by Kaz Spivakovsky. So please vote now on the proposal. Thank you, that vote is carried. Congratulations to our executive committee and my thanks to Chris and Graham for their service on the executive committee. So that's the voting over. Thank you very much for your patience and for using the slightly unfamiliar technology. I'm glad it worked for us. Okay, on to our next item. Uh, the next AGM date has not yet been set. We'll let you know in due course. Uh, fingers crossed we'll be back to a face-to-face -face meeting by then, which will be great. Okay, I will now hand back to Mario Del Signore, who takes over as president at the close of the meeting. Mario. Thank you, Simon, and welcome, everyone. 
Before I go any further, I'd like to thank Julian for all his hard work as Guild President, and especially for steering the ship through a pandemic. I do hope my two years are less eventful. I also want to thank the Executive Committee members who have offered me wise words of counsel and helped me prepare for this role. Finally, I'd like to thank Kaz Bukowski, who stepped up to be the Guild's Treasurer, now Vice President, and help the staff and volunteers deliver a significant surplus despite all that has happened. When I joined the Executive Committee, what seems like many years ago, I had no idea it'd end up with me here today. I've tried to learn as much as I can over the last few years, and of course this is a never-ending journey. Our mission here at the Guild as the UK's association for the whole of the architectural ironmongery sector is to advance AI through integrity, professionalism, representation, education and training of our members. I'm going to talk us through the strategy later, but I wanted to set out my own priorities for my term as President. Firstly, ensuring all our members have all the tools and benefits they need to grow and improve themselves, their businesses and staff. In this way, and others, we need to future-proof our members. Our three pillars of education, technical standards and community remain strong but we can and will develop them further. Secondly, ensuring we become even more relevant and useful to all of our different types of members. The Guild just isn't about AIs, it just isn't about manufacturers, suppliers or consultants. Our industry is not about any one group, but all of them. The more the borders merge between these, more than ever before. So I want to make sure that the Guild is relevant. And finally, make sure our members have the community they need to thrive. The network that our association provides is like the blood rushing around the veins of the industry. It's my role to make sure there is nothing blocking this flow and the beating heart remains healthy. We will do this through our virtual networking events such as this one and in due course face to face again. I came into the Guild via the Institute so I'm a strong champion for the branch network and it's my goal to ensure that they are properly supported. As part of this community we must ensure that these new to our industry have all the tools and support they need and that we nurture and showcase future talent. I want to give a leg up to the AIs and leaders of tomorrow. Fresh talent brings new creativity and can also help our whole industry address the changing needs of our clients and end users. Those who know me already know that I'm keen on collaboration. I want to continue our outreach program with sister associations here and overseas to encourage collaboration and cross-pollination between some of the great organisations that exist across our industry, trying to bring together shared resources when that makes sense. I also want to ensure that the UK continues to lead the world in setting standards. The Guild is leading this area at the moment through the work of the staff team and volunteers. It's by setting standards and holding our membership to them that we demonstrate leadership. These areas underpin our strategy and I look forward to working with Simon Forrester, the staff team and many volunteers on the future shape and structure of the Guild. One other thing I want to say is that being a member of the Guild isn't just about taking. Your membership isn't just a transaction. It should also be about all of us giving in to help our industry. This is our industry. When we work together to improve the whole industry, we improve it for ourselves too. But we also help to improve it for future generations helping young people stand on our shoulders so that we can all reach higher in the future. One way to support this goal is to remain a member of the GAI and I thank you for your commitment. However, we also want you to get involved. Please come along to our events, engage with our networks, sponsor something, provide some copy for the AIJ magazine and perhaps even volunteer a small amount of your time to help. Allow yourself to be inspired by this. I've got so much personally for my time as a volunteer and I know you will too. Talk to colleagues locally about supporting the development of the branch structure. That's where I started. Thank you in advance to the members of the wonderful staff team in the Guild and our, and our committee's working groups who I know will continue to give me help and support where I need it. I am proud to become the president in our 60th year. When you volunteer for something like this, the pedestal that you end up on also puts you in the firing line. As I move into the firing line, I hope everybody will remember that I will always be doing my very best for the Guild its members and the industry, and I hope that I can fulfil your expectations. As part of the One Future Vision strategic plan, we are forming a single organisation under the Guild banner. This new organisation needs to reflect that it is formed of both companies and individuals alike. 
we went through a detailed tender process with five design agencies and a group of volunteers from the Gildan Institute worked together to select a logo from the many that were submitted. We asked that the new logo gives a nod to our 60 years of history and brings together the blue, and the guild, blue of the Guild and the Burgundy of the Institute in equal partnership. Sorry, but I just can't bring myself to say claret and blue. It's just not possible, but uh, the logo looks good. As you can see from the designer's workings, it's based on a hinge. I'm not sure it's EN 1935 compliant though. And here it is, the new logo for our new guild. I'll briefly show it to you in different formats so you can see how it looks. This new logo will be introduced from today, but there's no immediate need to change. Please continue to use your materials that bear the old logo. We do not want you to throw things away unnecessarily. Brand impacts will also be sent to paid members in June. My thanks to the working group members who have delivered a logo that ably demonstrates the new organisation roots and how it encompasses all of our membership. I'll now officially close the 60th Annual General Meeting and hand over to our guest speaker, Bill Hill, Chief Executive of the Lighthouse Charity, to speak on the topic of mental health. Thanks for listening.